Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk about the big game, right? For legal reasons, I won't use the S word, but let's talk about the big game. That's coming up this weekend in the NFL. Just a couple of plays, team-related plays. I might do a later video on individual props. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, there was a fascinating interview. I encourage people to look it up. Um, it was on Mike Lombardi's VEASAN show. Uh, he and Stormy Bonantomi are uh, interviewing Bruce Arians, right, who won a Super Bowl with Tom Brady and who famously came up with the phrase, no risk it, no biscuit, right? Keep in mind, too, uh, Bruce Arians um, was with Kurt Warner for a while. In other words, Arians is a guy who likes a quarterback who takes risks. So Mike Lombardi asked him about Brock Purdy, and Arians did not hesitate. Arian said flatly that he loved the guy and talked about how Purdy throws the ball into tight windows. Now, I know that's not how Purdy is being thought of. Right? I understand guys like Cam Newton are going around calling Purdy the 10th best player on the 49ers and a system quarterback. Folks, I'm a Giants fan. I watch the Niners because they're the local team, and a lot of my friends are Niner fans, right? Plus, I, I bet on sports. Let me just say this. Um, Brock Purdy is the opposite of a system quarterback. Brock Purdy is a gun slinger, right? You don't get his yards per completion unless you're a gun slinger. Right, folks, this isn't Trent Dilfer with the Ravens. No, this is a gun slinger. He passed for over 4,000 passing yards this season. Folks, he threw for more than 30 touchdowns this season. Look at the numbers. No one was doing him any favors when he was one of the top candidates for the MVP award before imploding on Christmas Day against the Ravens. Right? So, let me just say all of this talk about Brock Purdy is simply ridiculous. Right? We know what the talk is really about. The guy was the 262nd pick in the draft the year he came out. Also, the guy looks soft, right? He doesn't look like Joe Namath, right? He doesn't have that swag where you look at the guy and you think, oh, wow, you know, plus the guy looks a little undersized, right? That's what's really going on here. Guy looks a little bit nerdish, and that's somehow blinding people to the guy's game, right, folks? The guy's game is ferocious. The first bet I like here for the Super Bowl, and I consider this a steal, quite frankly, odds-wise. I'm not saying it hits, right? There are a lot of other things that can happen in the game, but odds-wise, this is a steal. It's Brock Purdy to win MVP of the Super Bowl. You're getting that at a plus 222, right, folks? The numbers are absurd. If you go back through Niner history, you're going to find that Brock Purdy's numbers are, you know, literally up there with Joe Montana's, right? He set some team records this season. Also, the consistency is amazing, right? Amazing. Even in the game against Baltimore, where he throws four picks and doesn't have a touchdown pass. Just to understand that Brock Purdy still had over 200 passing yards. Just to understand that against that ferocious defense, Brock Purdy was only sacked twice. 
right? So Brock Purdy, MVP, plus 222. Let me point out, too, I know we're getting carried away with the fact that Pat Mahomes has beaten Buffalo on the road, then beat Baltimore on the road, and uh, stuff like that. Folks, um, look at the numbers for the chief offense, the second half of that Baltimore game. Ask yourself what really happened in that Baltimore game. Right? We'll overlook, you know, the fumble on the one yard line, the problems Baltimore had in the red zone. Look at the number of rushing attempts. Folks, Baltimore, the offensive coordinator panicked. That's what happened in that game. Right? Baltimore didn't even run the ball as much as they should have against this chief defense. Let's also pop another bubble here, and I, I get it. Trust me, I do. Mahomes in the first half in the playoffs has been spectacular. The chief offense in the first half in the playoffs, these playoffs, has been spectacular. Let me offer a different point of view here, because it's not what you're hearing. I believe we're being caught up in the moment here. Right? Just understand, Pat Mahomes has won two Super Bowl MVPs in both games. Right? In both games. Pat Mahomes is down double digits in the second half. Mahomes had to come back in both games. KC, same coach, right, same tight end. KC in both of those games, Super Bowl games, aren't those relevant here, right? Including the game against San Francisco when they had Jimmy Garoppolo as their starting quarterback. By the way, Garoppolo underrated. Let me just throw that out there. Understand in both games, KC got outplayed in the first half. They certainly got outscored in the first half. Right, so here, we have a Super Bowl where a lot of people seem to think that Kansas City is going to come out and is going to own the first half. Right, the argument goes that Green Bay had San Francisco up on the ropes and but for the second half, but for the last drive of the game, the Niners should have lost that game, right? The argument is that Detroit had San Francisco up on the ropes and but for the second half, but for Dan Campbell going for a first down, but for Detroit imploding toward the end of the game, the Niners wouldn't have won that game. Let's flip the script here. I'm going to go on what I've seen in Super Bowls of Kansas City of late in Super Bowls day one. I like the Niners in the first half over the Kansas City Chiefs. Right again, I like the Niners in the first half over the Kansas City Chiefs. Right, folks. This coach, Kyle Shanahan, has already gone up against Pat Mahomes in a Super Bowl. Frustrated Pat in the first half of the game. Let's be real here, too. That Kansas City-Baltimore game, aren't you a little bit perturbed by the fact that what KC did positively in that first half was so reliant on Pat and Travis Kelsey? Isn't that the connection? How many catches did Kelsey have in that first half? Ten? Folks, the people in the crypto community will tell you that when you have a single point of failure, that's a vulnerability. Right? You don't think that San Francisco is going to find a way to slow down Travis Kelsey? You don't think that Pat Mahomes is going to be forced to throw the ball to Rice and others more, the wide receiving core that, quite frankly, this year has been underwhelming. 
Let's say KC is forced to run the football. Let's say we see a lot of Pacheco. Right, folks? They're going to be playing into San Francisco's hands. If they run the ball a lot, that's going to take the ball out of Pat Mahomes' hands. Now let's talk about a vulnerability San Francisco has. You saw this in the Cleveland Brown game. By the way, that's the other thing, too, to think about. When you look at Brock Purdy's numbers, when you realize that Brock Purdy, again, had more than 4,000 passing yards this season with more than 30 touchdowns, with a very healthy yards per completion, right? In the Cleveland game, San Francisco at Cleveland during the regular season. I picked Cleveland because a few things came together that game. Cleveland had a great defense. Cleveland slowed down the San Francisco 49ers offensively. We get to the last Niner drive of the game. Folks, I'm just telling you, it looks a lot like the last drive against Green Bay. Right? In my opinion, this is when you figure out who you have at quarterback. Purdy actually drives them down the field against Cleveland. The Niners bring out their field goal kicker, Moody. This is a vulnerability. Moody misses the kick. Let me repeat that. Moody misses the kick. Right? I will say here, I feel more comfortable talking about the Niners winning the first half than I do the Niners winning the game in part because of their field goal kicker. Isn't that what just cost Buffalo against these Kansas City Chiefs? Let me just say, too, understand, as good as Purdy's numbers look, the Niners had to play the AFC North this year. Right? So they played Cleveland. They played Baltimore. They didn't have a quarterback-friendly schedule. Right? The Niners, for those who have forgotten, got to the NFC Championship game last year. Right? So the Niners had that deep in the playoff schedule against a tough conference. And Purdy put up these numbers. So what I want people to do is to just consider the possibility that this quarterback, with one of the highest winning percentages in the National Football League, who is playing in his second NFC Championship game, right? Who beat out Trey Lance, who's now a Cowboy. A guy who was picked, I believe, third in the NFL draft. He beats out Trey Lance to become the starting quarterback for Kyle Shanahan's system. Right, folks? Kyle Shanahan's system has certain expectations of the quarterback. Right? So, thank God for Cam Newton. Thank God for him. I love the fact that the public is looking at a ringer. Right? Again, don't believe me. At the end of the day, it's about the numbers, isn't it? Look at the numbers. Right? The NFL is looking at a ringer. A guy who Bruce Arians talks about throws the ball in tight windows. Right? Takes risks down the field. Isn't doing dump-offs, check-offs the whole game. No, he's passing for more than 4,000 yards in a season. And folks seem to feel that this guy, who's one of the better quarterbacks in the entire league, and I say that not as a Niner fan, just as a gambler who watches Niner games, the fact that people feel that Brock Purdy should be going off at a plus 222 to win MVP is simply ridiculous. Let me just point out, you know, I'm a big fan of Christian McCaffrey, right? I'm a season ticket holder for his uh, college, right? Our college, we'll, we'll call it. Um, 
I know he's a big time talent. Don't be confused here, folks. Again, Brock Purdy, as successful as McCaffrey has been, and he's clearly a pro bowler, clearly should have been in the MVP conversation. But again, Brock Purdy had over 30 passing touchdowns this season. Right? The quarterback position just has more opportunities to excel, especially in a game like this. Especially when you have a George Kittle on the team, when you have a Brandon Ayuk on the team, when you have a Debo Samuels on the team. Folks, look at the offensive guys going to the Pro Bowl from the 49ers. Right? Brock Purdy just has too many advantages as the quarterback of the Niners. For to me, a reasonable person to believe that Christian McCaffrey has as good a chance of winning the MVP as does Brock Purdy. Right, folks? You know, let's, let's just say maybe Christian wins it. But I like these odds on Brock Purdy. So the two bets I like here, and it's a bit counterintuitive given how successful KC has been in the first half of playoff games this year, right? The first is Brock Purdy to win MVP of the Super Bowl, plus 222, right? I'll agree they're not going to give it to Purdy if Kansas City wins, right? Pat Mahomes likely walks away with his third MVP. Right? My point to you is the team that's favored in the Super Bowl are the San Francisco 49ers. Right? Folks, quite frankly, it's astonishing to believe that the line's below three given what went down this season just a few weeks ago. If anyone remembers back six weeks, we were questioning the Kansas City Chiefs. Now I'm supposed to believe that they're within less than a field goal of the San Francisco 49ers. Right? I like Pacheco. Is he as good as Christian McCaffrey? Right? Who is the equivalent on the Chiefs of Debo Samuels? Which Chief wide receiver is better than Brandon Ayuk? Let's look at the tight ends, folks. I, I just had Travis Kelsey as my tight end in a fantasy pool. And I was underwhelmed most of the season. Right? Let's just say if you're a Niner fan, you'll take your chances with the comparison between Travis Kelsey and George Kittle. Right? So, I'm sorry. But looking at the talent, there's a talent gap here. Let me also tell you a story, too. I'll leave with this. Years ago, I'm a Giants fan. Years ago, the Giants were playing the 49ers in a playoff game. Right? This was the infamous playoff game where they went to the replay and you saw that the football hit the Niners special teamer. I can tell you, as in the Mandalay Sportsbook, uh, Giant fans erupted. Of all the times I've spent in sportsbooks, that's one of those that sticks in my mind. But let me just say this. While Giant fans were out in force, and it wasn't a Super Bowl, this was an NFC playoff game. While Giant fans were out in force in Las Vegas, right, we could not match the size of the 49er contingent wherever you went, right? So I'm at a buffet. I look up. I see a Jerry Rice jersey. I see a Joe Montana jersey, right? You're, you were in a sports book. You would look around. You saw Niner jerseys all over the place, right? I'm just telling you, folks, this Super Bowl is in Vegas. I know. Gamblers are saying, hey, the Chiefs know the Raider Stadium, Allegiant Stadium, well, because they play there every year, right? That's the party line right now on these sports shows. 
Folks, I'm telling you, Niner fans take over Vegas when the Niners aren't even playing in Vegas. The Niners are one of those teams that travel, right? It's like Steeler fans. It's like Green Bay fans. They travel. Right now you're telling me the Super Bowl is in Vegas? Let me, let me go one step further. The country might not realize this. If you're around Niner fans, you realize this. Emmanuel Sanders makes a sprint for the end zone. Jimmy Garoppolo, if he hits Sanders with the pass in the Super Bowl, the Niners beat the Chiefs. Folks, the Niners were beating up on the Chiefs most of the game. Pat Mahomes was throwing picks that game. I'm telling you, Niner fans, that's a sore spot. Well, guess what? I know the country knows that Buffalo is sore about Kansas City. Right? Going back to that game where Buffalo thought they were past Kansas City, then Pat Mahomes in the last 20 seconds goes the length of the field. Well, understand, Buffalo's not the only team that soared toward Kansas City. The Niners have a grudge against Kansas City. Understand, too, Niner psychology. Niners thought they were going to beat Philly last year in the NFC Championship game. Then that game, Brock Purdy gets hurt. Niners are down to their third-string quarterback. Right, so understand, folks, for the Niners, this is a long time coming. They have the team that they think is the best in the league. They have the team in front of them who they feel stole a Super Bowl from them in the second half. Right, they have a squad who they feel, and keep in mind, a lot of it's new. McCaffrey, recent addition. Brock Purdy, recent addition, just the last two years. They have guys who they feel will get them back to where they believe they belong. Right? A team like this are the Dallas Cowboys, where I'm sure Dak and, the comp uh, Dak and crew, C.D. Lamb, they keep hearing about Aikman, the triplets, right? Emmett, Michael, uh, plus one, Dion. Right, And they know, okay, we're not measuring up to that history. The fans want to know why they can't get back to the Jimmy Johnson days. Right, folks, you have the same dynamic in San Francisco. Right, people out here still talk about the catch. When was that, 82? You want to talk about the good old days. You want to get Niner fans screaming. Just flash... Walsh, Montana, Rice, Lot on the board. Right? Well, folks, they haven't won in quite some time. They feel they've had the horses. Right? They're back, and oh, here is Pat Mahomes. Pat, I'm telling you, Niner fans feel we owe you one. Right? I'm expecting the Niners come, to come out in the first half loaded. Right? I'm just telling you, one of the stories this season, you haven't seen it in the playoffs yet, but one of the stories this season are the Niners in the first half. Right? And let me just say, they have the quarterback. Brock Purdy, MVP, plus 222. I like that play. San Francisco in the first half, I like that play. If San Fran had the kicker, that the Ravens have. You know, I'd be boldly picking them for the game. They don't. They don't. Also, the bottom line with Pat Mahomes, right? This is his fourth Super Bowl, and he's still in his 20s. Right? Think about that. Right? His two MVPs are second half of the game MVPs. Last year, I had money on the Eagles. Pat Mahomes was injured. The guy had a limp in the game. Second half, he came out with that limp, and he was a gunslinger, right? I'm telling you, I'm more afraid of Kansas City in the second half 
than I am in the first half of this game. Right, folks? They're not playing Baltimore. San Fran is not going to be afraid to run the ball at them. They're playing the San Francisco 49ers. I think San Fran has so much emotion. They're going to come out the gate and they're going to explode in the first half. I like San Fran in the first half to go with, you know, individual independent bets. Brock Purdy to win MVP at a plus 222. Right? You tell me that I can get a guy with more than 30 passing touchdowns in a season with a 69.4% completion percentage during the regular season. You tell me I can get that guy at a plus 222 to win Super Bowl MVP on a team that, quite frankly, I had rated as the best team in the league for much of the season. And all I can say to that is thank you very much. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.